For me, the discussion around PACT is primarily a professional issue, and the issues are professional because they involve um, assessment, they involve views about learning, they involve views about children, they involve about how we should be running our New Zealand education system, what, what, sort of, what are the um, philosophies and principles that underlie that. I also want to say that my comments are not a criticism of the people who've been working on PACT. I, obviously there have been some very good people working on PACT and I think they've been given a rather impossible and somewhat invidious task. As I see it, the development of the PACT is an attempt to sort, sort out the fundamental flaws in the national standards policy. And in my opinion, it, it certainly does not rectify the fundamental flaws and it will only create an illusion that the national standards data is more reliable and valid. The government's national standards policy as a means of gathering good system data was and still is fundamentally flawed. And developing a tool that makes something less flawed is not an acceptable approach. It's a bit like saying this is a surgical procedure that doctors were very uncomfortable about or felt it was not the right approach that they could sort of sort it out by just have, using sharper knives. All in all, PACT appears to be a very complicated way of trying to fix the more obvious issues around the reliability and validity of the national standards data. Establishing reliability and validity in assessment is an extraordinarily complex task. Actually, they, the, the presentations from the Ministry, they're at pains to say that PACT will still um, be fundamentally driven by um, overall teacher judgement. And so the re reliability and, and validity issues are not going to be resolved. The, the reality is that if you've got OTJs, there will always be some variability in judgments, and you either have to accept that or you don't. So trying to develop a tool that ostensibly reduces that variability is largely smoke and mirrors. And I certainly don't want te my teachers engaged in assessment processes that are more to do with political expediency than processes based on sound assessment principles. Um, another concern I have is that, that for teachers it is yet another layer of assessment. And from my point of view as a principal, I'm more than happy with the, the data that our students have both at an individual and a summative level and have been so for some years. National standards has really, um, which was ultimately forced on us, has added very little real value to what we're already doing for assessment and therefore I can't see that the pact is going to be of any major use to us. The question I would ask, is it, and I would ask this of the use of any assessment tool, is it time well spent? As principals, we need to decide whether the time that it would take classroom teachers to complete the requirement of PACT would be the best use of their time and in the best interests of students. From what I can see, PACT will increase teacher workload considerably and it will be disproportionate to any positive outcomes and it does seem to me to be unnecessarily complex. My understanding is there's eight aspects for the in maths that are assessed, there are seven in reading and seven in writing. And then each aspect is represented by a set of illustrations. And then those set of illustrations have a problem, a task or a test, and this is straight from the presentation, and a task and a student response. So assuming that there were two to three tasks for each of those aspects, which you would need if you're going to have any kind of sort of um, coverage, that would mean 40 to 60 assessment tasks and judgment per child and I'm assuming that each task and assessment would take at least 30 seconds and I think that's pretty quick. That would mean in a class of 30 a teacher would be spending at least, at least 30 to 45 hours completing the assessments. That equates to nearly two full weeks of teaching time or about 40 to 60, 45 minute maths lessons, reading lessons, writing lessons. I took a couple of my most experienced classroom practitioners to the ministry presentation and they were shocked at what it would mean for them as classroom teachers. Another issue is whether it's value for money. We've been told by the ministry that I think it's $5.2 million. Um, that's my school's operational budget for 10 years. 
and it's equivalent to a year's salary for about 700 to 800 teachers. So I personally, I think it's not value for money. Um, and if this is all about helping disadvantaged students or priority learners, then I can think of better things I'd do with the five million dollars. I want to just talk now about some of the things, very briefly about some of the risks. Um, one of the risks is the same as identified in the mandate of national standards, that the potential to further narrow the focus of our curriculum to just reading, writing and maths, along with a, a very narrow view of what constitutes achievement for children. Another risk of PACT seems to be built on a premise that views all learning as a very linear process and it also appears to atomise learning into discrete assessment tasks. What I've seen of the PACT so far is that it seems to take very discrete little assessment tasks. There may be some valuable ones in there, but there are judgments then being made on children, on teachers and on schools. Also, the intended use of PACT will just further feed the comparative, competitive model of education, and this is certainly not the way to improve outcomes for the most disadvantaged. It hasn't worked anywhere else across the world, so why would we be pursuing it? Another risk is because PACT has to be completed by each teacher online, it will reduce a more collaborative approach to moderation within schools where teachers get together, discuss and compare student work. The other thing I think is likely to happen because of the complex, what seems to me to be a very complex nature of the tool is that it has the capacity to promote very superficial and hasty assessments due to the sheer workload. I can see teachers sort of just out of sheer um, pressure of time sort of hitting buttons quite quickly and it won't take them too long to work out which buttons they need to hit to get the expected results. Other issues around who owns the data, who has access to it, what purposes it would and could be used for. And I think we've seen over the last few years a fairly clear um, ideology that's driving the direction of education that would give us serious concern for what is likely to happen to that data. Another concern is that ultimately it has the potential to undermine teachers' own confidence in their professional judgement that there will be tools that will do it for them. And I think that would be, that would be a, sad, a sad day. So no doubt there are some parts of the tool that may be of value. There have been some, as I said, there have been some good people working on it. And in a different context, the assessment material may have been helpful to teachers. But I definitely don't support the use of this, of PACT in the current environment. I'm not saying that good assessment information is not important but we are in danger of turning New Zealand primary education to an, into a much more narrowly focused system that places far too much faith in certain types of measurement, which will largely be used for comparative and com competitive purposes. And not only does this ultimately impoverish the richness of our curriculum, but it has the potential to do major long-term damage to primary education as we know it in New Zealand. I believe we need a much more cohesive and inclusive strategy that enables us to take control of professional, take back control of professional issues such as assessment, rather than allowing people who know very little about learning and assessment to dictate what will happen. <laughs>